What's up you guys, it's Tyler from The Harringtons and we're back today with a brand new video. Now about six months ago, I made a video all about this combination right here. This is the Zion Crane, the Sony a6300, and the 16 millimeter 2.8 pancake lens from Sony. Now this has been my go-to gimbal setup for a bunch of months now, and this video blew up. It is by far the video on my channel with the most views. Now ever since I made that video, I have been getting comment after comment and email after email asking me how to balance this setup. Because when you first purchase this setup, it doesn't seem to balance the right way. And part of that has to do with the fact that this lens is so light and so small that there's really no way to counteract the body. Now, in order to answer all these emails, I'm finally making this video to show you exactly how to balance the crane with this specific setup. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk through the entire process from start to finish for balancing the crane with this setup. Now, I just wanna say right off the bat that this uh, also will apply if you have a Sony a6500. I just happen to have the Sony a6300. And if you have a heavier lens or something like that, the process might be a little bit different. So this is gonna be really uh, specific for those of you out there who have the 16 millimeter pancake lens. So with no further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna power this off and we're gonna start balancing it. So we'll turn it off and then we'll start from the very beginning. All right, so the first thing to note is that I do have a quick release plate on here. Uh, I think that's really important. So for me, for weddings and stuff like that, I do keep this camera on the gimbal at all times, but it's still really nice to have the quick release plate for whenever you need to change batteries, swap cards, anything like that. It's really easy to just pull it on and pull it back on. So the specific quick release plate I have is perfect for this setup and for this camera, and I'll leave that in a link down in the description below. I really highly suggest you get this one. I tried using the Manfrotto plate and initially, and it was way too big, it was too tall, it just didn't really work out right. So um, I really highly suggest you get this one. But okay, so when you're installing your quick release plate, basically um, the way that you're gonna set this up is what you can see here, this is the sled. So I have the, um, the quick release plate attached to the thread. I'm in the middle track of the, the three different track options, I'm in the middle track, and I'm pushing it as far forward as possible. So the way you know what forward is, is that there's this little thread here, if you had, it's actually, if you have a really heavy lens, this helps to, you can put a thing in there to hold it up. So you know you wanna push it as close to that as possible, all the way to the front in the middle. Cause you need this to be, again, the, since the lens is really, really light, um, you need as much forward um, balance as you can possibly get, all right? So that's how you set the quick release plate up. And once you have it set like this, you just set it and you leave it like that forever. You never have to change it unless you use a different lens on your camera, all right? So the next step is to go ahead and attach uh, the 6300 on here. You wanna make sure that you have the lens cap is off, that you have the card in there, you have all the different things. Um, again, the motors can kinda handle a little bit of balance changes, but it's best if you have everything as close as it's going to be when you're actually using the camera. To balance this thing is actually really, really simple. Uh, so the first thing I always do is this back uh, axis right here on the arm that's closest to you. So we're gonna untwist this and we're going to, this is, um, I don't know exactly know all the names. I wanna say this is the tilt. Axis, basically what, what our goal objective here is to get the camera to balance, and we take our hands off, to balance flat this way, right? So if I push it too far this direction, it's going to, you see it's gonna lean this way. If I push it too far the other way, it's gonna lean that way. Our goal is to get it right in the middle here. Oh, that's still a little off. It just really small adjustments until you get it right. Perfect, so I can do this really quickly on a wedding day. I almost always have to do this every time I pick it up, just because for some reason the screw doesn't necessarily hold it in here like super locked tight even when I, when I set it down. So we lock that off. Uh, the next one we're gonna have to adjust is gonna be this one right here. So this is the one that throws people for a loop because what you think in your mind is that you want it to balance like this, you want it to be facing forward, but that's not right. Again, because the lens is so light, if you have this properly balanced, it's gonna be facing straight up to the sky. Okay, that's really important, so I'm gonna say it again. If you have it properly balanced, it's gonna be pointing straight up to the sky, so it's gonna look like this. So, my objective for this is to get it, so this is too far back one way, this is too far the other way, we want it right in the middle, right about here. Okay, so now this is properly balanced. And I think this is where a lot of people run into issues because they get to this point and they say, I can't get it right, I can't get it balanced. Or if you have it facing forward, you turn it on, the motor's gonna freak out because it's not balanced correctly. This right here is properly balanced, pointing straight up, okay? 
And that's pretty much it. So this bottom one, honestly, because of the way that I use the gimbal and I only use the follow mode, this bottom uh, axis doesn't really affect me that much because I don't ever point it straight forwards. Um, the way to do it is you hang it off the edge of a desk. I really, I have mine set to four and that's good. So on the little side here, you see a little notch. I have it so that the four is just barely sticking out and that's good for me. So once you have it like this, then you're good to go, right? So we're gonna go ahead and power it on. And we're, we're set. Okay, so now the way I like to use the gimbal is I double tap the joystick and I like to do what's called follow mode. So if I point up, the camera goes up. If I point down, the camera goes down. Turn to the left, turn to the right. This is my preferred way to use the camera. Um, I just find this the easiest and coming as a glide cam user, I feel like this is the most natural to me and I can get the best shots this way. Um, but that's it, so that's all you have to do. It's really just these two axes that I have to worry about. This one I never have to bother with and the only time I really ever have to do anything is with this back one if I set it down on a wedding day. So uh, that's it, you guys. That is how you balance the Zhiyun Crane with the Sony a6300 or 6500 with the 16 millimeter pancake lens. So if you guys bought this combo because of my video, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you trusting me enough to go out and buy this combo and check it out. Like I said, I've been getting amazing results with it. I've been so, so happy with it and hopefully you have too. Um, and if you've been struggling trying to balance it, hopefully this video has helped you out. So if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and leave this video a like, that would be super appreciated. Um, you can find the links to buy all of this stuff right here, to buy this whole setup, including the quick release plate, in the description below. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one.